Hello crafty friends, this is Louisa Heinzel. Welcome back to a new video here on my channel. Today I would like to talk a little bit about brush techniques. So I would like to show you some of my techniques that I use for my junk journals, that I use in my art journals for greeting cards and that stuff. And that you can use in nearly any paper craft project where you want to use some watercolors. If you never heard about these brush or colors that come in these little containers, then you should check out the info box of this video. I've linked there a video where I answer five basic questions about this brush or um, powder pigment stuff. So <clears throat> the first thing I would like to show you is how to make a beautiful background, for example, in this altered book. So um, I would like to show you how to make a background on a book page so often we use book pages in our journals and yeah we think okay nice <laughs> but sometimes they are here and on the other side in the signature for example there's a beautiful image or something like that and on the other side you have this blank book page and perhaps you don't know what to do with them um, one uh, possibility is to make a brush or background so I take a fabric here this fabric towel and put it um, as a protection under my book page because we uh, will spritz with water here and it's really dangerous that the um, color comes here through the page to your other page so here nothing can happen I spritz the water first to get a, yeah the surface really wet then I take my brush and I just sprinkle it over here and I would like to take a second color. So it seems to be the same blue, but it is a different blue. And perhaps some green here. Like this. And as you can see, the pigments um, are reacting with the water really fast. And in some areas, uh, they don't react. So as you can see here, perhaps or here on the top, um, we have this little pigments left over. So I don't like that when that happens. So I go over it with some more water. You can do it like this and you see they will react. Or you can, of course, take a wet paintbrush and activate the areas where the brush or pigments um, yeah, are like they were when they came out of the container so here for example i have a really um, big thing of this and the thing is when you um, don't do that when you don't bring the pigments uh, to this reaction with the water then when this whole stuff is dry um, you will have this here on your page and when you um, flip this page to the other page um, then it can happen that you get some blue um, things here and then that these pigments stay uh, loose here and that they don't stay to the page so um, that's not so good I think and of course with the paintbrush you have the chance to um, mix the colors a little bit. As you can see here, it's a little re uh, little bit of a C and you can bring this around and get a really cool um, color out of this different colors here. And if you think, okay, that's way too much here, you can also bring this here to your fabric and get rid of this water here. And um, perhaps you think, okay, too much color, then just bring it to the, um, edges of the page and so you can make it like this and then it's not too much here on the page and it gets not too dark when it's dry and I think this would be a really cool background for um, some, for gluing some fuzzy cut images or um, you can also make a belly band over it or a pocket or something like that. Or you can um, fold this to the other side when it's dry and make a little um, side pocket here or whatever you want. And suddenly this, yeah, I don't want to say boring book page because no book page is boring in my eyes. But um, yeah, this normal book page can be turned into a really beautiful background within seconds. And 
now you can decide if you want to let this air dry or if you want to heat gun it. <clears throat> In the end of this video, I will show you the difference of this um, because there are some things you have to have in mind when you do it the one way or the other way. So let's leave it like it is for the moment, but here I have to take some color away. So if you have this problem that it's dangerous that the color comes here into the slot of your book, so into the slot between one and the other book page, then you can make it like this and take the color away. Another possibility is to use a stencil. So um, I have to say, of course, you will never get a clear result of your stencil when you use brushes and water. But you can, um, of course, get some interesting results as well. So let me just take two of these cards here. So that's normal copy paper, a little bit thicker copy paper, but it's no watercolor paper or something like that. Let's just place the stencil on top. And then, oops, hello. let's spray a little bit of water first. Then take some brush or pigments, sprinkle them here over this thing. And of course, you can also um, mix this brush or colors. And the more water you use, of course, the more they will mix up, like you have seen on the page before in this altered book. And then spritz more water to get the pigments, uh, yeah, to let them react with the water. And you can see you have much water and pigments now on the stencil, of course. Um, and it would be a really big mess when you lift this up as it is. So I take another piece of paper and put it here. Wait a little bit. And as you can see, you have a really light, uh, abstract, but really beautiful background. Use this as a tag um, to stamp, to journal on, or something like that, and it would be really wonderful. Same thing here. Of course, you can take a, a bigger um, piece of paper, and you can see the, yeah, this abstract thing here of the stenciling. I think that's really cool. And you can use this uh, pages here, of course, for um, collaging or make little scrap clusters or something like that. Now, when you lift up the stencil, of course, you will have something like this and no clear um, stenciling. But, <coughs> excuse me, please, um, you can imagine where the flowers were and um, it belongs a little bit to the paper and the amount of water what result you will get and of course it belongs a little bit to the um, pattern of this stencil so um, yeah this is only for demonstration of course i got much better results than this in the past but yeah as you know when you turn on the camera you will never have the results that you had before that's a normal thing <laughs> So let's just take, what's here going on with my spritzing bottle? Let's take a more abstract stencil and try another one. And now I make it a little bit different just to show you and demonstrate you what will happen. I put the pigment and don't spritz more water. Uh, perhaps a little bit of purple. So I leave it like it is and take another page here and lift this up so that you can see what happens here. Look at this. Isn't that cool? So, and you have this. Okay, so now this is relatively dry. 
then you can lift it up and you see a really abstract thing and <clears throat> when you compare that with this flower stencil you can see that um, yeah more abstract stencil with bigger uh, slots here is a little bit more uh, practical for this brush or things but it's possible so it's both it's uh, is possible um, you can also use the leftover paint here of course on your um, what you have on your stencil to make another thing when you put this here and you have this page that you already have color on and you make it make it like this then of course you can get a print over um, the thing that you had before on your page so it's also possible to let uh, one layer of the brushes dry and then make another on top another really abstract thing but i think that's the cool thing about brushes that you can get really awesome abstract things and i see a really cool journaling card here hopefully you too another technique is to bring only some dots of water to the paper I think you've seen this technique on my Instagram feed or yeah on my Facebook page I <clears throat> showed some speed up videos about this technique so um, I thought about how I can make loose watercolor flowers or leaves or something like that with this brush or colors and because of that fact that they are such uncontrollable I thought about a technique um, how to get this typical watercolor effect with this mixed colors and that stuff um, with this brush or colors and yeah I thought about that and one night <laughs> I came to the idea okay perhaps it's possible to bring the color only to um, special areas here of the paper and then go over it with a paintbrush after adding this powder and make something like this um many of you have asked me okay Louise, how have you done this that's so incredible um difficult it isn't just take the paintbrush take a good light and the fly of the day of course <laughs> she is a uh, yeah special friend and when you have good light on your table then you can see where the water is and it will be no problem when you move around um, so you turn around the container with the pigment very carefully it will be no problem to get the color there where you want it so only to this um, dots of water and even if two dots here are touching each other it will be no problem when you do this a little bit carefully so this yellow here i want it to stay there and hopefully that will work i don't know you never know what will happen with this and yeah that's the good thing about it i think um, but yeah if you leave it like this and if you would let it air dry it will stay there and it will look like this thing here is behind the other you can also add for example, a little thing like this. And let me just show you to bring some smaller leaves here. And you can also take some color from here and uh, use that to make another leaf or some shadings or something like that. And <clears throat> you can also say, okay, I want to have some more yellow here in this flower, then take the um container with the yellow and put a little bit more there i think it's not such visible as i thought but yeah i think you know what i mean you can also when you think okay some splatters would be not bad take your paintbrush go into the wet brush or paint take something to your um paintbrush and 
splatter with that color around so that's also good to do it like this because when you know uh, when you want to have exactly this color here for example next to the blossom of this little abstract flower of course you can't get the exact color that you have here from one of the containers because this is already mixed from the yellow and the red and you will never get the same color when you for example mix something here next to your book from this uh, colors you will never get the same color um, as you have on your paper because of the fact that the yeah pigments are mixed from different colors by themselves so in this container here is not only one red and in this container is not only one yellow but they are mixed out of different colors i don't know if you can see that here's a little bit of blue that's no mistake from me but that's one of the little pigments that are in this container so um every brush or color is mixed out of different colored pigments and of course you will never get the same color uh, when you want to spritz here around when you try to mix them there or, um, next to your page so i take my paintbrush here in this color then i take some color and spritz next to this leaf the same here so that I have the exact same color around here. I would recommend to let this air dry. Don't use a heat gun to make sure that your um, colors here stay here as they are. Another really nice thing that you can um, do with the same technique like this flowers is to make a frame around your page. So of course the thicker the paintbrush, the thicker this frame will be. So I'm going here with this paintbrush and make first make a line like this and then like this. Go all over here. And then I try to bring my pigments here. Not too much because I don't want the frame um, to be too heavy around this loose flowers and as you can see that was not enough water so I take another brush that can take a little bit more water and I'm just going over it here of course you can also move the whole book that will also be possible so for example like this put much water there in this edge and then take the book and let the color flow here so let the water flow through the colors this way of course the whole thing will mix up to a really yeah something like an orange in this case and the colors will not stay such separately like they stayed here in the uh, blossoms of this flowers but i think that can be a cool effect as well to have this frame here around And you can also make some variations with the intensity of the colors, of course. <clears throat> when we have this, let's do it here on the bottom. Just bring a little line of water here. You can connect it here. As you can see, in the moment where you connect this water with this water, the color flows auto, uh, automatically to the point where you want um, to have it. Let's make it a little bit darker here on the bottom to have a little bit, yeah, something like a lighter thing there and a, a little bit heavier thing on the bottom so that the page uh, has more sense or something like that. And when you move this around, please be very careful because, of course, not only this pigments will move now, then, uh, but the rest will move as well. And it can happen. Yeah, that, that this looks a little bit weird when you move it around too much. So you have to do that really controlled and carefully to get a nice result. And be a little bit patient. But 
then it looks like this. And now we come to the difficult part. So when you want to have a frame, a closed frame, so that you have a thing here, you have to be really careful with this slot of the page. So I just take the color from there and from here and bring it around here. And I make sure that no water flows into the slot here. So this is an altered book, so it has no signatures, it's no junk journal with signatures, um, but with signatures this thing uh, perhaps will be a little bit easier because you can um, open the book a little bit more than I can do it here with this altered book. Another possibility to make some brush of flowers um, is to use a palette knife and some white gesso and the powder. So there are two different variations I would like to show you here. The first variation, and by the way, this is a technique I uh, discovered by myself, so I've never seen that before. So perhaps you say, okay, I know that. Then please let me know that in the comments when I talk about something that obviously is my idea, but it is no, not my idea. Take the palette knife and make something like a flower with the white gesso. Leave a little bit of a space inside there around this things here, but you can do it like you want it and um, make the shape of this flower. Uh, I always don't know this. This petals, I think that's the right word. You can form them by pressing the palette knife like, like this. And then first let this dry. <clears throat> of course, it takes a time, but it's worth it, believe me. Um, in the meantime, let's prepare the second flower. So we do it the same. First make this flower with the white gesso and of course you can make some structure as you can see I use it really thick and the more you press the less gesso you will get there on the page. You can also bring this a little bit, um, yeah, fade this out a little bit or how shall I say that then it will look a little bit more loose. So then it's like this. So this will be the first variation. I will let this dry completely. And this will be the second variation where I don't let it dry. Uh, I look where my petals are here from the flower. And then I go into it with a darker color to the inside and as before I try to get this really controlled to the middle of this thing. For the outside I use a lighter color so for example yellow in this case and try to bring this to the outside of this flower. <clears throat> Take your clean palette knife, so let me just clean it up here, and go into this gesso very carefully and take the color and the gesso from the inside to the outside. So, like this. And then you see this will mix up. And in this step you can also make the flower a little bit bigger if you want. For example like this so I do this here only for demonstration on a normal page perhaps I would uh, like to have the flowers in nearly the same size but you can bring it now on um, there where you want it like for example like this 
let's do it a little bit more extreme that you can see the effect when you press the palette knife to this wet gesso and that you can see what happens with the different colors so that you not only get this orange apricot thing but that this mix is mixing up really cool for example like this when you now think okay nice but it's a little bit yeah not such dimensional take your water when this is still wet so when the pigments in this gesso are still wet spritz a little bit of water as you can see the rest of the pigment here begins to react everything that uh, in the first step felt next to the gesso so to the directly to the book page will react now <clears throat> and now you can say okay this center point of the flower i want to have it much darker then just take the container with the darker color in this case the red and bring a little bit of this pigment here Now you can wait and look what the colors do. Um, but you can see that this reaction here is not such extreme. So I don't want the hills of this pigments, as I said in one of the techniques before. So I take a paintbrush and I have water on it and I go really carefully to these pigments that haven't reacted with the water. So that, yeah, this thing can react but that i don't mix the water with the gesso when you would go here into this center point when it's wet and you would um go too much around with your brush of course you will mix the white gesso with this uh red color and then you will have a purple or something like that that or something that's again much too light for this project. As you can see, the brush color um, stays here in this little uh, slots that I created with the palette knife. And of course, you can take this carefully and you can also bring this around a little bit if you want that. And you can bring this color a little bit more to the petals of the flower so hopefully that's the right word what i'm uh, saying here so that you get something like this and some more dimensions um in each of this yeah so for me <laughs> this middle point is still too light and i'm just thinking about adding some purple <sighs> i don't know and that's something um, that seems to be a little bit confusing what I'm talking here but I did this many times and every time there's a different result sometimes the center is really dark and yet you can be um, happy with it and you can uh, leave it like it is and sometimes like this was before it's really light but now look at this dimension that's a totally different result and a totally different feeling of this flower. If you think, okay, um, I want to have a stamp for this flower, of course you can do it with a paintbrush and go uh, here into the color with a wet, thin paintbrush and make a stamp. For example, like this. So when this is dry, this gesso here. Another thing is what you can do um, to make it the other way around. So let the gesso dry first and then uh, I'm just thinking about what color I want to use. <clears throat> Take your color that you want to use for the flower and bring it to this middle point of this whole thing. The first color first um, and then take your spritzy bottle here and 
hope that oh sorry <laughs> begins very very good sorry that's just my new lamp that is over me here and i'm not so confirmed with it um hope that everything will be good now when you spread this spritz this water i make sure that this little um hole here where the water comes out is directly over this thing so not like this not too much away um and if you want you can also of course protect this thing here so that if it happens that something of the pigment is spritzing around that it don't comes to your other flower and then spritz like this take a paper towel or something like that to um, remove a little bit of the uh, color that comes around here when you don't want it too much uh, to the sides here and then take the other color so this red here in this case and just put it to the middle And then take a wet paintbrush so that the red is not uh, coming too much to the outside. And as you can see, this flows into these little slots of the gesso. And um, the difference between this one and this one is very simple. Um, this is much more uncontrollable, of course. So this is uncontrollable as well, because everything with brushes is <laughs> uncontrollable. But as you can see here, the white of the gesso, this little lines and the structure stays a little bit more there where it is with this technique. You can also now add some of the purple. I can't find my purple, where is it? Oh, here, in the middle to get it similar to this, if you like. Okay, so I just made a little mistake, too much purple here, but yeah, and then wait, please wait, do nothing but wait. Another really cool thing that you can use on top of the dried brushes is this Stabilo All Pen for shading. Another thing, as I said, you can do is doodling over the things that you've painted when the um, brush color is dry. So you can just take a black pen like this and go over this and make some doodles like you want it. As you can see, <clears throat> yeah, it goes really well over this uh, red color, even if this is really dark and really um, not dark, but intensive. And you can go over it and make your doodles like you want it. And you will all, um, you will see the black color of this pen uh, really well. As you perhaps know, I'm a really big fan of this um, outstanding watercolor circles that you, <coughs> excuse me, that you sometimes see on Instagram or somewhere else. 
and I thought, okay, why not trying this with brush or colors? So I'm just making a circle out of water to my page. Then um, what you can't see in the camera, I go with my face really near to the to this circle <clears throat> so that I can see where the water is and where I have to put the pigment. And of course you can also do this on white paper so that you have a little bit uh, of an easier job to um, doodle into this later because you will not have this um, uh, writing here from the book page. But yeah, I like um, to show you that this whole stuff is also possible um, on yeah, any kind of paper that you can imagine. And uh, we will not always have white paper in our journals where we want to do this technique. So um, we will often have this old book pages and stuff like that. So things where it's already um, something written or something like that. And yeah, so that I would like to show it on this kind of paper and I'm just <clears throat> removing the color a little bit so that it's not too dark here just to show you um, yeah, the, the difference between it so when you put the pigment wait a little bit then you can easily remove it with such a um, baby wipe paper towel or fabric or whatever And what you also, of course, can do is let these circles touch each other. So if you do it like this carefully, then of course you can get this effect that you would get with a watercolor, a normal watercolor as well. And you can also bring with a wet, clean brush this color here into the other. But you have to do that, of course, when the color is still wet. So when this is dry, that wouldn't be possible. Okay, so let's dry this. So when it's dry, it looks like this. As you can see, the colors are a little bit lighter than before. So not such dark as you uh, would expect when you see them in the wet uh, yeah, stadium. So now we can start doodling in these circles. So I just made some really simple things here to this page so that you can see that even with the simple um, things it can be a beautiful page. So I like the simple things really much and I think it's a nice addition to every journal. And I also made the same kind of leaves that you can see how different they look um, on the different colors. So on the purple, for example, they are not such visible as you can see on this green where I took some color and the water off with my little um, thing here with this uh, tissue paper, a napkin or something like that. <clears throat> there you can see the black color much better when there's not so much brush on it, um, but it also belongs to the 
kind of the color so um if you use green or something like that it's uh, comes out a little bit lighter than the purples and the blues for example okay so in the end of this video that's now <laughs> i want to talk a little bit about um, the difference between air drying and um, drying it with a heat gun so for example this effect here um, that i made that shall look like a normal watercolor effect um, it comes out not such extreme when you dry it with a heat gun so this page i dried with a heat gun out of camera and as you can see this is not such extreme um, before drying it was much more of this purple color in this green here and while i dried it of course i had to control it in some way and i had to take this to put it here and get some color and water away so that i don't destroy my circle that i don't spritz out of my book or in the areas where i don't want to have the color um, this here for example um, that was the background from the beginning for this i used a heat gun when the color was nearly dry and as you can see all those effects where the um, green and the blue um, colors are meeting each other um, they don't connect such extreme um, like here so this watercolor effects are much more visible the actually um, the actual uh, effect that you got and that you could see when it was wet <clears throat> will stay there much more when you let it air dry than when you heat gun it um yeah <laughs> okay so hopefully this little thing here was a little bit uh, some kind of inspiration um hopefully you liked it if you liked it please please leave me a comment give me a thumbs up for this video subscribe to my channel everything i think you know what you can do to um, say that you like this video and to support me a little bit i would be really happy if we see the next time um and until then i will close my little journal here and wish you a really great crafty time and hopefully we will see you the next time bye bye